Hello and welcome to the first video of the multi-device 2.0 series. We did a multi-device series last year back in May. It's been such a long time ago and we've learned a lot since then. We've made our multi-device approach more efficient in terms of performance, more efficient in terms of data storage. It uses less storage on your device or on the user's device, I should say. And we've implemented it in games ourselves selves, and honed it over the past few months and over the last year or so just to get this device series out. I know a lot of people have requested a new series, a new updated approach to multi-device. And because there's so many devices that are out, we've got iOS and within that we've got iPad which has a resolution of 2048 by 1536 or 1024 by 768 basically the ratio is 4 by 3 then you've got the iPhone 5 you got the 6 you got the 6 plus so with something like the 5 you got the 1136 by 640 then you got 1334 by 750 and so on that's roughly 16 by 9 ratio it's slightly off but you can essentially think of it as 16 by 9 or 9 by 16 depending on what orientation you've got in then you've got some of the older iOS devices which you're probably not going to need to target but if you do that's 960 by 640 or 640 by 960 if you're in portrait mode and that's the retina if you're doing non-retina like 3G and 3GS I can't fathom why you would want to anymore but if you are that's 480 by 320 or 320 by 480 and that's a ratio of 3 by 2 or 2 by 3 again depending on whether you're portrait or not and then on Android, you've got the 16 by 9 ratio. 16 by 10 is also very common amongst Android devices. And quite a few devices are now popping up with a, what's the core ratio? 16 by 10, which is very similar to 16 by 9, but just not quite as wide. And back in the day, in the other series, the first multi-device series, what we did was have multiple assets. I believe there were five sets of assets for all the different devices and though that that's great and I still think in terms of pure quality, visual quality, that is the best approach. It's not the best approach from a development perspective because you have to create five times the number of assets. Technically you would only create one big one then resize it but that still takes time and when you're creating loads of assets and if you make one minor change, you have to change all, all the different sizes. That becomes an issue in terms of time. Plus, there's also another issue for the user because they have to download games which are huge. Our game Glowbreaker used a similar approach to this and the game was about 50, 60 megabyte. I think it was, it was a tad under 50 megabyte, I believe. Yeah, 50 megabyte or so because the Android file size limit is about 50 meg for the APK or used to be at the time it isn't anymore and we brought it just below the 50 megabyte mark and yeah it looked great but it's not the most efficient and what we've come to realize is though we have devices in our pocket that have ridiculously high resolution for example our, my phone is a Samsung Galaxy S6 which has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 technically 1440 by 2560 because you're probably holding orient I mean portrait mode most of the time but my TV that I've got next to me which is a 55 inch has a resolution of 1920 by 1080 it's significantly less than my phone though my phone is just a tad above 5 inches my TV is 55 inches that is crazy and what we've come to the conclusion of is that you don't need ridiculously high resolution assets for your mobile devices that's correct like for an iPad Retina yeah we've got a re device that's the resolution of 2048 by 1536 but a good quality iPad asset will work just fine on an iPad Retina there's the odd game out there that really does benefit from Retina gr graphics that are really made for a Retina device or a high resolution device, I should say. But most games don't need it. Here's, here's a, a very popular game, Candy Crush. Makes millions, has 
is worth over one billion dollars so it's not a small game by any means I don't like the game at all but I know a lot of people doing it's very successful and if they do something that's a certain way then developers are more likely to think it's the right way or more likely to approach it using that way if you have access to different resolution devices hopefully you do if you do download Candy Crush play it and see what you notice on there the assets even on like high resolution devices aren't that high resolution if you look carefully yet they still look fine and for most games they do that's the reality so this video we're not going to do any code I've already talked a lot about resolution that I haven't even showed you anything I'm going to show you a Photoshop file which is a template for multi-resolution background creation and multi-resolution game development in general with Cocos 2DX but we're going to use a resolution of 1136 by 768 or 768 by 1136 if you're in portrait mode for stuff like an iPhone 4, 5, 6, 6 plus including the S's as well an iPad, iPad Retina and high and low res Android devices you might be thinking how is this going to look on an iPad Retina for example which has a ridiculously high resolution especially for the screen size and what I would say is go and check out our game Mighty Dots it uses one set of assets which is what we're going to show you how to do on every single device and have a look at good that looks honestly in terms of assets I don't care what you think oh actually I do care what you think about our game but you checking it out isn't about the gameplay it's about how good does the assets look on a particular device and I can tell you they look great on an iPad Retina they look great on an iPhone 4 on an iPhone 5 on an iPhone 6 Plus iPhone 6 a Nexus 7 Nexus 9 it looks fantastic so let's actually open up a Photoshop file now this is a multi-resolution template that we have created in the description there will be a link to the source code or a github page with the source code from all the videos in this series and there will be this on that github link as well so check that out so what we have is a black background and then we have a few layers and we got iPhone 4 and below which has a resolution of 640 by 960 because it's in portrait mode then we have iPhone 5, 6, 6 plus and 16 by 9 Android Doo -doo -doo -doo. oh no that's not what I wanted that's exactly what I wanted here we go so yeah it says and 16 by 9 Android so this covers 16 by 9 devices essentially and this one covers iPad and 4x3 Android basically 4x3 devices and this covers 16 by 10 essentially you create your assets at a resolution of 1136 by 768 or 768 by 1136 depending whether you're doing landscape or, or portrait and you would have the most important parts of your background in the middle aka what's within this yellow orange rectangle and anything outside really is an important so if they can't see it it doesn't matter you might be thinking again do games even use this philosophy apart from let's say our games check out Candy Crush if you display it on an iPad on an iPhone 4 an iPhone 5 and other Android devices with different ratios what you'll notice is the backgrounds some devices show more and some devices show less but you never feel that if you played it just let's say on a specific device that it was missing something because any crucial elements are either separate sprites and as a result you position them accordingly or it's in the middle of the background let me show you what I mean we have an example game background right here this background is from our game Mighty Dot, so you can actually see something that we've used. This will also be available as a layer with this PSD. So if you want to use this, you're more than welcome to. Let's go and disable some of these. So on an iPhone 4, what is inside this rectangle actually 
including the rectangle the border itself you would see behind that but because it's so thin you can just consider it as what's inside it is what you would see on your device and it looks fine yes there's some of it missing but if you just ignore that and just have a look at what's inside it looks great if you were to display it on a 16 by 9 device this is essentially what you would see so iPhone 5 6 6 plus that sort of stuff if you were to display it on a 4 by 3 device iPad, ret whether it's Retina or non-Retina, you would see this. Again, you've still seen the main aspects of the background and you still enjoy your game because you don't feel like anything's missing. That's very important when designing games. And finally, 16 by 10, which is just slightly taller or wider, depending on how you're looking at it, than 16 by 9. So, we have several different ratios and if there are devices out there which there are with slightly different ratios they don't vary too much and they'll still work great so we'll have this template other videos will cover creating and positioning other assets such as backgrounds being one of them sprites for example player sprites hood elements that sort of stuff individual items we'll have a video covering how to implement the multi-resolution code like I said in the description we'll also have a link to our source code which will have this PSD so you can check this out use it for your game development and like I said we're going to use one set of assets which will work great on every single device out there and in the meantime I recommend that you check out our game Mighty Dots and Candy Crush and actually have a look how they do things because Candy Crush isn't the highest resolution game out there yet you don't feel that it looks pixelated and blurry it looks fine and on top of that they have backgrounds that you can see more on certain devices and see less on other devices so this, it, this type of approach is used by big game developers as well if you have any questions feel free to post them on our education platform sonarlearning.co.uk forward slash questions.php there'll be a link in the description like I said there'll be another link in the description to the source code from this series and this multi-res template there will actually be two multi-res templates one for landscape and one for portrait please rate, comment and subscribe as it really does help us understand what you like and what you don't like about our videos. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.